In this video, we will explore the different parts of the automotive air conditioning system, understanding its operation, and working pressures for both our 134A and our 1234YF, used in these systems. 1. Let's start with the evaporator, an essential part of the system. Here, the refrigerant gas pressure is low, allowing the temperature to reach approximately 5 degrees Celsius. This condition enables efficient removal of heat from the vehicle's occupants. 2. In the automotive air conditioning evaporator, with the vehicle idling, the pressure of our 134A is 36 pounds per square inch, while for our 1234YF, it is 39 pounds per square inch. 3. Heat from the occupants enters the evaporator, causing the refrigerant to evaporate at this stage. For this reason, the refrigerant enters in liquid state, at a temperature of 5 degrees Celsius, and exits the evaporator in a gaseous state with a slight temperature increase, in this case, to 7 degrees Celsius. This temperature variation is known as the refrigerant superheat. 4. The evaporator blower optimizes the heat exchange. In a properly functioning system, the air temperature at this point should be around 10 degrees Celsius or less. 5. After leaving the evaporator in a gaseous state, the refrigerant, at 7 degrees Celsius in this case, moves to the compressor. Before reaching the compressor, it passes through the accumulator with a dryer filter, designed to clean the refrigerant, and retain possible drops that haven't evaporated in the evaporator, preventing them from reaching the compressor. 6. The refrigerant reaches the compressor suction, identified as the thicker tube, and internally increases its pressure through the gas compression process. 7. This pressure increase leads to a temperature rise, reaching approximately 70 degrees Celsius for these refrigerants. The high pressure for our 134A and our 1234YF is usually close to 180 pounds per square inch. 8. The gaseous refrigerant, at high pressure and temperature, moves to the condenser to dissipate the heat gained in the evaporator. The high pressure and temperature acquired in the compressor facilitate the expulsion of heat, allowing the refrigerant to transition from a gaseous to a liquid state. 9. The condenser fan promotes heat exchange. 10. Upon leaving the condenser, the refrigerant maintains its high pressure, but loses temperature due to the heat expulsion into the environment. Therefore, its temperature at the condenser's exit, is very close to the temperature of the external environment to the vehicle. 11. The liquid refrigerant moves to the expansion device, to return to the original low pressure. Additionally, at this point, the refrigerant enters at a temperature, for example, of 50 degrees Celsius, and exits at 5 degrees Celsius. 12. Finally, the refrigerant returns to the evaporator, closing the refrigeration cycle. The three most common failures in the automotive air conditioning system, as well as possible solutions. The first failure is related to the fact that when the air conditioning is turned on, there is normal airflow, but no cold air. This can be due to various causes. Before taking any action, remember that the normal temperature of the air at the window outlets should be between 0 and 10 degrees Celsius. A. If the failure has been gradual, it is most likely due to small refrigerant leaks. To check this, 
visually inspect the system hoses, paying special attention to the joints. Remember that oil stains are indicative of leaks. B. In conventional compressors, if the activation clutch works correctly, examine the compressor pipes. In normal operation, the thicker pipe should be cold, at approximately 10 degrees Celsius, while the thinner one, should be around 70 degrees Celsius. The absence of these temperatures, would probably indicate a gas leak. C. If you have pressure gauges, the readings should be around 35 psi on the blue gauge, and about 180 psi on the red gauge, with the air conditioning on, without accelerating the engine. D. If the failure is sudden, for compressors with clutches, check if, when turning on the air conditioning, you hear the pulley engagement noise that moves the compressor. If the clutch does not work, check fuses, relays, and the system pressure switch, as a faulty pressure switch, can prevent power from reaching the compressor clutch. E. Also, check if the compressor coil receives activation voltage when turning it on and verify the coil's electrical continuity with a digital multimeter in resistance function. As for the second failure related to the lack of airflow when turning on the system, meaning there is cold air but with a minimal flow, the following steps are recommended. A. Check and replace the system's air filter, according to the car model. B. The lack of air may be due to an obstructed internal duct, possibly caused by a faulty air control window servo motor. C. Also, make sure the turbine fan is working correctly. When you don't have access to the fan, pay attention to noises and check the electric consumption of its motor by following the electrical lines. The third failure, associated with a bad odor when turning on the air conditioning, may be due to a dirty cabin pollen filter. The following actions are recommended. A. Change the filter at the appropriate time, and in case of persistent bad odor, clean the ducts with antibacterial spray or foam. B. These products should be applied following the manufacturer's instructions, protecting the vehicle's upholstery and using a mask. C. Additionally, emphasized the importance of unclogging the condensation drainage tube to avoid the accumulation of fungi and bacteria that generate bad odor. <laughs>